Hey everyone, welcome. In today's lecture, I wanted to do a full masterclass on how I started my $42,000 per month Amazon FBA product. It's gonna be a longer video. I wanted to really just take some time. There's some some things I just can't say in eight minutes uh, for the YouTube algorithm, so, so be it. This is for beginners, for advanced, for intermediates. This is just my story and how I go about a day of, you know, running my business, how I would, you know, how I actually found what I'm selling, how I found a manufacturer for it. It's going to be kind of like a full range of how I found my product and how you can find yours too. So let's get right into it. So we're going to be starting here in Helium 10 discount link in the description. Of course, if you need it, if not, that's fine too. So we're going to be, you know, my favorite technique is to just be using the search volume feature. I'm going to go big. I'm going to go 5,000 search volume. I'm going to start with monthly revenue, minimum 20,000. I'm going to go high and just look for some big, big baller markets really quick, maximum of 5,000 reviews. I'm going to come in here. I'm just going to select a few categories at a time. I'm going to do like, maybe we'll just do tools and home improvement and see what happens. Has to have 5,000 searches a month, has to have minimum of 20,000 in search, uh, monthly revenue has to have less than 5,000 reviews. Let's check it out. Staple guns. Hmm. That's going to be potentially hard to get into. Egg storage. So I know that's kind of like a growing market. Let's look into that. So first tip that I have for you is that I open things in a new tab without going directly to them. So while we're here, we're going to capitalize on all of this data and we're just going to open it. That'll give us something to go look at after. Window alarm. Let's check it out. A stoggles. <laughs> What's a stoggles? Comment down below if you see anything that you would have clicked on. Okay, framing nailer guns, check that out. Some of those I think are gonna be dominated by bigger tool brands, but we'll see. There's a interesting um, tool company called Rhino USA, which is like they make uh, ratchet straps, but they did it in kind of like a unique way. They patented it, made a whole brand run it, and they do extremely well. So you can break into almost any market, almost. Some you shouldn't even bother, but just got off of my uh, Savage Sellers live call. First one we ever did, so that was really fun. It's great to talk to you if you were in there. Um, by the way, there's a link in the description to Savage Sellers. It's a subscription that I host on Patreon, and it comes with a whole whole mess of stuff. Uh, live Q&A, new course videos every week, um, product market picks, that I produce every month, uh, member posts, direct messaging. I mean, there's there's a lot of stuff there. So I'm gonna leave this in, by the way. I wanna take a stance here and show what it's really like to run a business, even though it might not be, or I actually do this stuff, even though it might not be the best, most insane high energy YouTube video. This is really what it's like, okay? I mean, it's not passive income that you easily in six minutes can find a hundred thousand dollar product. Like it doesn't, you just got to put in the work. So I wanted to show that and I wanted to do my whole process here today. So I'm going to retire this list. I want to try and make it through it. And then most of it's scrolling And by the way, a little bit of process of how I think about things. guess I think of who who buys this thing what is their motive for buying it it's almost like you're an investigator right would they be susceptible to like a new product in that area and do I think it'd be relatively easy to manufacture you'll notice a lot of the literal tools I haven't clicked on I'm, I'm just I'm not gonna develop a new impact gun it's not gonna happen so like garage floor epoxy kit, interesting. The price of that's very high, but I want to check that out. Caulk gun. I had to buy one of those recently to redo the the shower. I had some some mold grow in there. Okay. Last page, and then we'll go check some of this stuff out. So one of the things I like to think about too is like, would they be excited to buy this aka like are they an enthusiast of this thing 
or is it a need? And it's okay to sell to needs, by the way. It just can be a little bit harder with your marketing. If they're excited naturally, you can put some of that excitement into your marketing. And then everyone's excited about different things, so sometimes it can be hard to put yourself in their shoes. I do like the idea of some of these organizer type things. Okay, so that's the whole list. And as you'll see, we open one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different ideas. So we're gonna go in there. And I want you to not attach yourself to any one of those ideas and assume that it's probably not good. So I like to take a relatively negative approach to this, meaning like I try and get it to, I try and prove it wrong. I don't try and prove it right. Of course, product research is hard. It's not easy. If you're just going around trying to prove everything right, you're going to end up selling a lot of bad products. I know because I've done it myself. Much better to try and take the stance that this is probably not going to work. It's probably a horrible product to try and sell. Um, but you can use some of the market feedback, what customers are saying, how it's selling, etc., to prove you wrong. If the market proves you wrong. You're in good shape. So some of these are interesting. These ones that like move the egg down itself as you take one. That's very interesting. Auto rolling egg organizer. Let's check those out. Those are kind of cool. And so immediately when I see something like that, right, I start thinking, well, is there any way that I can make it into like a shtick? Like the thing has some punny name and it is like an improvement to what's currently there and there's some type of like egg mascot i'm biased that worked really well for me in my market and so i like to think of things through that lens it's kind of like when you get rewarded for doing something you always look at everything that way but until proved wrong i'll keep thinking that way so this this egg roller thing is not it's not a bad idea, I don't think. Okay, so there is some Chinese competition, which is okay. It's not the end of the world. We can beat them. What I don't like to see is that it's like a, a market where there's no ability to innovate. So one of the things that I notice is a lot of these are, well, all of them, except one, are plastic. So I'm like, what? It, like, you know, a lot of people are trying to move, especially like, I don't know, this audience, if you're buying things like four eggs to be rolled, like you, you seem, seem kind of seems like a granola kind of person to me. Um, the average Joe is just going to leave them in the carton, right? Or maybe you have chickens. That's why you need this. But moving away from plastic was my point. We make this out of wood or metal. We do a very similar design to the like the rolling one seems to be cool. It's got that element of shtick that I was talking about. Um, it like moves the egg towards you as you grab one. There's something satisfying about that, much better than just the holder. Um, so if we took this idea, made it into one that fits into the fridge, like this one, that might work. Okay, not bad, not bad start at all. So you'll see there, I like to just think through it. I just talk myself through it. I think of different angles. There's no rush. It's a reason for this long like live stream style video that I'm posting. Um, kind of unedited real time because of the fact that I just wanted to show, you know, I've been doing this for a long time. I have a successful Amazon FBA business. This stuff still takes me time. I still got to think about it. It's not right away that I get it. I don't, it's like, it's not that way. I want to kind of get back to that a little bit. So these are really interesting. I really like the sales here. Um, the revenue, can we see that? A little bit. Not really. I'm kind of blocking it with my big head. There we go. The revenues column is here. 11,000, 40,000, 35,000, 410,000, 55,000. Um, big name brands, that's fine. Doesn't scare me, really doesn't. Um, I compete against name brands that are in retail stores nationwide. Just fine. Right, as long as you pick your lane, you could you could do okay. So tool organizers, first of all, we gotta think about what do they mean by this? So we would probably want to drill down onto a new search term. Like a store, like a garage storage wall organizer is certainly different than like a power tool organizer 
which is going to be different than a drawer organizer. So we'd want to dial in. I think I'm probably most interested in like the the metal rack power tool organizer. That that one grabs my attention probably the most, I would say. Reason for that being is that there's obviously the most customization. That's a great main image, by the way. That one's very impressive, right? Right away, I see there's like, okay, there's maybe four slots for some drills in this one. This one's got like 10, eight, nine slots for drills to hang off of. That's really cool. Bunch of different shells. So let's check out that listing. They're doing incredibly well. 4.4 star rating. So some things are not perfect about it. Listing's not very good, actually. Main image is good. Listing's not. They kind of lost me with the listing. I just want some good lifestyle images. It's missing. Like really good cinematic in the garage, kind of dark, like warm lighting. And that's one thing too, is like, can you see a path to success via presentation, via outbranding, outranking, uh, writing better copy? making uh, better secondary images, driving towards conversion. Interesting. Very interesting. We'll come back to that one. Um, can't think of right away how to make it like, I think a brand name like, you know, the Rhino USA example I brought up could be interesting if you did like a, I'm not just going to say another safari animal, but there's something there. And let me, for the sake of that, let me show you what I mean by that, because that's a good example of how you might be able to break into a market like this. So this is a ratchet strap. They have a couple different variations. And they're just in the ratchet strap market. Right? I mean, it's like, there's millions of those things. And to be fair, they're kind of in like the towing trailer hitch style market. But still, I mean, the branding is awesome. It's, right, it's very apparent right away. So like if I were to just do ratchet straps, we could actually see right here, the Rhino USA. Um, I mean, they really stand out. There's something about that name. Uh, this this list, main image I really like. That's probably my favorite one. So if you could do something like that in a tool department, and then let me show you, okay, so the, here's a great example. The, the listing quality of this over what we were just looking at is night and day. The way they rendered their secondary images, it's like you have to buy. If you're looking at these images, you, you don't even have a choice. You just are like, well, I guess I'm getting it. <laughs> That's how your, your listing images should make, me, make you feel. Now look at this. It's like, that is so satisfying, right? The, the quality of the, the product itself is so high. I feel like I can like reach out and touch it. And then they're showing me the difference here. Like this quick press button release and secure method so much better than like reaching into a ratchet strap, grabbing that rusty metal thing and like torquing it back. Like that's very cool. I like that. So they've actually improved the product. Number one, it's one of the things I look for. Coated S hooks with safety clips, relatively new feature. Uh, retractability. And then this, I can't, I mean, this is like, an insanely good photo. So they're showing the dream outcome of the customer, like really nice, expensive truck, tying down a motorcycle on the back of it. Like it makes me feel in, you know, full, what's the word I'm trying to say? Um, I like tools. I like this kind of stuff. I, I have a, you know, a fly craft for fishing that we tie down with ratchet straps, very familiar with the market. So like I'm, kind of a stand for the this company right now, but um, yeah, great example of successful marketing and branding. Next product, window alarm. So here's, here's the thing, I don't like this one. Stoggles, what are stoggles? I don't even, what does that even mean? So does it mean that the, it's just the thing on the side makes it, oh, it's a brand, stoggles is a brand. Okay, so we're gonna get out of there. See, a great entrepreneur knows how to say no. Now, I'm not calling myself a great entrepreneur, but I know how to model great entrepreneurs. Um, let's see. Framing nailer gun. Yeah, too complicated. 
Again, not what I want. Now we're talking. Epoxy? I can fill a bucket with some chemicals and sell it. That sounded like strange. Um, okay, first of all, let's just check out the sales. Check out the sales. I'm definitely envious of people who can sing. I've never been able to sing. It sounds like so something is dying when I try to sing. So let's see. Revenue on this. So garage floor coating. 151,000. 600,000? Why is no one competing with these guys? Rust oleum. That brand, this product does 10K in sales a month. This piece of product. Look at that. Horrible. They should be ashamed. Not really, they're making 10 Gs. Um, let's see. Yeah, that's that's really interesting. I wonder, I mean the, so here's my problem. I thought it was like a wax for a car when I looked at their box. All right, listing check, listing check. Like a really poorly rendered. You gotta be kidding me. They don't even show the, a close up of the stuff. All right, this is something I feel like I can honestly compete with. I know that sounds insane because it's like, look how big the product is, look how big the market is. We've got a hundred reviews. I didn't. I don't think most people doing this are like gonna be like, oh, you have to use this product. Super brand loyal. I mean that the things don't even have good reviews. It's like they're getting relatively bad reviews. Uh, certainly can source this from the US. It's big, it's bulky. Don't have to sell that many to do well. That's a really interesting one. Okay, we'll, we'll keep that one in mind. We're definitely not gonna X that one out. Um, okay, this is just a repeat, different search term of something we already looked at. Garage organizer, same thing. Did I leave one of these open? No, okay, I'll leave this one open. All right, so we have three options here. My general rule of thumb is find 10 things before you move on and like really try and pick something. And that's like, I'm trying to make you feel good by saying that. Really, you should find like 100. And you can see how long it took me 19 minutes to find, I think like eight, but then we vetted down to three that are potential. So at this point, I would go back and then I would keep everything the same but I would change tools and home improvement to maybe patio, lawn, and garden. Slightly, I think, smaller category. Maybe I'll drop the uh, search volume down to 3,000 and like maybe the monthly revenue comes down to 17. Everything else stays the same. And I could even just left everything the same and just change the category. Oh, but we got to unselect tools and home improvement. There we go. Compost bins, outdoor garden. Let's check it out. So why did I click on that? Something in me thinks that someone who composts and like buys something specifically for their garden, really it all boils down to this. Would they be susceptible to a specific time type of branding? Do I think that I can go in with a product made just for that type of person that looks at like nothing they've ever seen before? And I really do think I could, I'm thinking very, er earthy, natural themed, like cool design, eco-friendly, renewable, donate 5% to some type of clean the ocean charity type thing. Like I think there's a, there's a business model there. A cat deterrent. That's pretty funny. I'm going to open that. Like your neighbor has cats, you're just like, God damn it. <laughs> These cats are everywhere. Um, griddle cleaning kit. Mm, there's really no harm in that. I always look at it and just say no after. You saw how quickly I could X something out. Hmm. Okay, stay away from the Halloween stuff. Unless you just like are really building a seasonal brand. Didn't mean to yawn. I mean, geez, you guys are just so boring. Just kidding. It's just early and 
I have not had breakfast yet. I don't know what that has to do with anything. Hanging pot. That doesn't sound too bad. Axe tool. Not just axe, axe tool. <laughs> the bug assault. One of my students showed me that in a call one time. It's really funny. Like all excited about it. You like I guess you like load it with salt and you can shoot flies with salt. Which that seems hard. Oh, I guess it, sh it shoots like a blast, like a shotgun. So, yeah. If you're just shooting one grain at a time, that would be insane. It would be a very good shot. So I'm not going to open, like, too many more. I'm not going to go through the whole list here. But I do just want to have a couple more to potentially take through my following steps. Acorn picker upper roller. Well, that sounds seasonal. Uh, squirrel trap. Oh, come on. I don't need to trap the little guys. Let's see. Okay, I think we're doing pretty good here. Combo spreader's not too bad either. Kind of falls back into the other thing we were talking about. And we're going to stop there. Okay. Oh, I've seen this before. I think I talked about this on my Patreon. I did not mean to do that. Yeah, so a lot of the complaints were that some of them are way too small, and then some of them aren't very functional, or they don't um, look very nice, or some of them look nice, but they're not functional. There was like a big complaint there with the amount of functionality versus size versus look. You can see that market's actually not too big. By the time we're down here, we're kind of completely out of the territory of like the big popular ones. Dual chamber. I wonder how well that's doing. So Miracle Grow is obviously just working with some type of like manufacturer to create a unique product in this market. Wow, that one does 125000 a month. $279,000 a month. $38,000. That's a pretty simple one. Hmm. So, by the way, we had this theory as American entrepreneurs. It's got to be bigger. It's got to be better. It's got to be different. Not always. Sometimes it should be smaller, it should be simpler, it should be cheaper. <laughs> like I'm almost like the way this market looks, I'm kind of liking the, the idea of like a repurchasable compost bin. Like the thing, the thing itself has a slightly longer life cycle than what's inside of it. And then like that starts degrading. Maybe that doesn't make any sense, but if there was like composting bin assembly bags I don't know if I'm even making sense here but something someone can repurchase it lasts like a cycle but it's much cheaper than what's currently available therefore you take a lot of the R&D out of de de designing something big and bulky and you reduce your shipping costs because you can ship it in a box this big if it's foldable etc um, like this $35 listing is doing $700 in sales a month not $700 sorry 700 units that's amazing Another one right here. Hmm. 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 Yeah. This this looks like pain. Designing that. That just looks like you're gonna lose your mind in R and D. Um. This looks great. Looks great. I would potentially look into like a reusable, not reusable repurchasable composting container of some kind or just a smaller simpler version not everyone wants to pay $200 and not everyone wants to have a big barrel in their backyard so if we can just have kind of more discreet little uh, bucket thing that'd be better and I know this I mean 
there's probably many times where I'm talking in a video and people are like, you know, this guy's not that intel. It doesn't even sound that intelligent. And um, I don't know where I'm going with this. <laughs> but what I mean is like, I'm really not, I'm not like a, a level 10 entrepreneur. I'm still getting my feet wet. I mean, yeah, I have a 40,000 plus dollar a month Amazon brand. And, you know, I've built multiple different six figure Amazon FBA brands over the past couple of years, but it's like, this stuff is not that hard. You can really just look at it and trust yourself. I think that's what one lesson that I've learned over the course of being an entrepreneur is like, you have to sort of start to develop intuition. Not everything has a perfect blueprint. You have to just be willing to test, think it through, learn quickly and take in a lot of information and process it and just like change the way that your brain works. If you can get your brain into a way where you've built habits, where it's able to recognize and understand different patterns and processes, you're gonna be a better entrepreneur. And that's all that I've done. I've just trained myself to think in a certain way. Uh, I'm not special. I didn't even go to college. I don't have any degrees, but I'm pretty good at making money. I mean, like certainly for a, you know, 20 something year old, like I haven't, I haven't done horrible and I'm only gonna keep getting better. I think that's all you can ask of yourself. So anyway, let, let's take a, um, you know, we have a lot of things to go over here. Let's take a, a moment, we'll move into a new segment here. Um, so you've had, like say you've built a list of 10 really good ideas. At this point, so we've, we've figured out who our customer was at this point and what they already buy. So this one's easy, right? Who's the customer? Grill master. What do they buy? Grill cleaning kit charcoal, a grill, um, wooden planks, grill gloves, All right? So you can easily kind of with my steps to product success, by the way, there's a link in the description, free resource link. So I've made, you know, different types of PDFs like this one here, this one here, a bunch of awesome steps for you in order. Um, you can go download those for free on my Patreon. You're welcome. Now we need to figure out which one of those products we're going to focus on. So generally when I do this, they're not all in different markets. I have figured out like my thing is going to be like, I'm going to do the composting thing, right? So like, I'm going to have, why don't we just do that? We're doing compost. Everything else goes away. I don't really care about saving them because I'm not really going to sell those products. I'm going to look into which one do they already sell? So maybe it's, it's like, I've got it down to compost bins or compost spreader. Let's check out the compost spreader, by the way. I'm going to open up Helium 10, see how, see how well they sell. They, they look like those old lawn mowers, don't they? And then, once you choose what to sell, you have to figure out how to make it better. So that's where we start going into testing what's currently available and coming up with potential ideas um, based on customer reviews. So that's kind of next step. I mean, these sell incredibly well. My God, and they all look the same. Why does this one sell for 150? Everyone else sells for 70 or 80. This one sells for 279. Oh, it's huge though. It's two, 44 incher. This is a 24 incher. And are these even smaller? No, these are 24 too. It's interesting they're able to charge 50% more. Very interesting. I wonder why. Let's click into the listing. Lancy. Hmm. Maybe I um maybe they do really well with like external traffic, but I can't necessarily know why they'd be doing significantly better for twice the price. But anyway, um, it's between those two products and here's the criteria for how I pick the next one. It is, I want to think of something that has potential return customers, higher lifetime value of the customer. What's going to get them coming back. And then 
Which one are they more excited to buy? Which one leads them to buy another thing from me? So even if it's not the same product, which one would they be more likely to go from a compost spreader to my compost bin or from my compost bin to my compost spreader? Um, and then which one are they more susceptible to high level branding on? High level branding, of course, just means creating a feeling that they belong to that offer. They wanna follow that brand around. They really like their message. They like what they're doing. They like the story. They like the feeling they get when they look at that product and interact with it. I would say the easier one here, um, profitability is also huge. So which one's gonna be more profitable? Of course, it would probably be this one. It's collapsible, has a nice small um, size box and certainly a lot of different um, things we can look into. So this is where like, again, I have a hard time rushing through this, this is why if, I, if it was up to me, this would be 10 hours long. Um, but let's just say this is the one, right? So we ran it through all the things that I just said, which one sells better, um, or sorry, which one, you know, has better lifetime value, returning customer, higher profit margin. Let's say we landed on this, so it's not a 10 hour video. What I'm then going to do is I'm going to open Helium 10 and I'm going to open Review Insights. Then Review Analysis. We can see the word however shows up in 21 reviews and it averages out to a 3.6 star review. So what's that however? How can we make it so there's no however? They got a however, we don't want a however. I found it floppy and difficult to set up and fill on my own. They claim you don't need to stake it, but if I had enough to fill it most of the way, it would have been pretty floppy. I mean, I can just adjust it to make it smaller, which you'd have to do if you had less compost to add, but I add to it daily and I'm not interested in adjusting it frequently. Slowly falling over, that's pretty frustrating. So we can make it more rigid, good. We can even include stakes, like she said. Disappointed with the product. First, the material is reasonably sturdy. I found today evidence that some animal was able to chew a three inch hole through one of the sides, pull out some fresh food scraps. Since the walls are relatively pliable and far apart, I find it very difficult to reach in and properly toss and turn the scraps that are in there. Interesting. No, 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 it's not that easy. In the fall, I literally have leaves coming out of my ears, so I may start again. Now I just need to buy a shredder. They basically say in their video, put the bin together, add your kitchen waste, and add some brown waste, leaves, grass, paper, and in two months you have a beautiful compost. This just not, isn't true. Not by a long shot. Well, she's very upset or whoever that is. Misunderstood. The, the bin would have been exemplary. However, none of that parts required to secure and assemble. So this is, I mean, this is simple stuff. We gotta make it more rigid, make it more sturdy. A lot of the people are just complaining that it's like, it's kind of floppy. Um, again, right here, there are slots in the bin that can fit stakes once driven into the ground. There isn't much to this. Okay, include the stakes with the thing, right? It's very simple. So at that point, I would come over to my, first of all, USA sourcing template, link in the description, free resource. Come over to ThomasNet, composting. Let's just try with composting first. Mm, okay, wow. Shredders, bags, packaging. Let's check out shredders. She said she needed one. Bags and equipment. Thomasnet.com, by the way, is how you find US manufacturers. Okay, manufacturer standard in custom refuse trash waste, soil and compost shredders. Okay, I wonder if those are on like a small level, like Recreational, um, shredders, shredders, chippers. 
Okay, the shredders might get us in trouble in the fact that like they just might they might mean something else. Like it might be like huge machinery. That's not what we're looking for. Let's visit the website. Yeah, these are probably huge. Yeah. Yeah. You sell one of those a year, you're in good shape. All right, we're not doing that. So compost bags. And this is truly the nature of finding a manufacturer, especially in the US. It's like, it's a lot of, I don't know. It's a lot of reach out. Oftentimes not able to find, in, like it only takes one though. So you gotta look through here. Um, took me weeks, but I found it. And so weeks is not that bad. Weeks, a year, uh, over 18 months ago, to have a business that every single month does really well now, very much so worth it. Oh yeah, I do have an account, but I'm not signed in. Okay, and then finally compostable equipment. I don't know why I said it like that. Okay, plant-based pet waste bag and composters. Let's check that out. We don't want like machinery. We want actually more simple stuff. Oh, they don't even have a website. Come on now. No one likes that. Maybe if we click on that, I think it might still be the still be the contact form. Oh no, we did it. Okay, here we go. That's probably my fault. Okay. Okay. Aha. What do we got here? So they got blog posts, composting units, home composters. Oh yeah, and these are electric. I mean, manufacture your products. Wow, this is a good, good resource. So they can actually do manufacturing of custom products. That's very cool. You can get a free quote now, pitch to them what you would want to sell. So that's where this template would come in that I made for you. Hey there, my name is Blank. I run a brand called Blank. 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 We're based in Austin, Texas, and we're working to develop a product for these specific customers. We recently came across your website and are interested in working with you to source the custom product with the following specifications. Below, I have a few questions. If you could answer them, that'd be great. Now, obviously, I'm not gonna read the whole thing. Before you do that, you need to know. So people tend to take that trajectory that I just took, summing it up in a video, where it's like, that's not the real, the whole thing. <laughs> you need to know what they need to make for you first. You can just go reaching out to them and be like, hey, I'm trying to work on something. Like, what do you guys think? No, you need to know. You need to say, this is what I want. Can you achieve it? Can you do it? We're slightly flexible on these three points. Other than that, we need to just know what your price is to achieve this. And that comes from testing. And that's where I would order your competitors' products first. And I would go to YouTube and I would search best composter for home use. And I would look at these, and I would look at these, and I would look at the simple ones that I had, tumblers, beginner's guide, understand the process, how does composting even work? I become an expert of industry. I would go to forums and I would search um, best composters. I would look for Reddit. I mean, I really messed that one up. I would look for Reddit posts. I'd look for blog articles. I would look for um, Q and A's that people have done. I would look for maybe listen to a few podcasts. This is the kind of work that I just can't really show on camera. I mean, that would be the most boring video ever, which is why I usually skip over it, but you have to do it. And guess what? It takes more time than we've even spent here together so far. This takes a long time. So go test it. Once you have a good idea of what your customer actually wants from the product, then you can look at the market and say, is that there? And if it is, you probably don't need to go there. We truly want to make better products for customers and win because of that. We don't want to just go in 
with another ripoff product, make a small amount of money. We want to disrupt the market. We want to go in, be the one of the best sellers, if not the best seller. Um, you do that with a great new innovative product that resembles all of the features of what people have been wanting and asking for for the past few years. So you win by listening to the customer better than anyone else has listened to the customer. Then you're going to use a website called PicFu. PicFu split testing. And you're going to make surveys. So just like this, same day results, quick turnaround. You're basically going to say which option um, in game assets. Okay. Which option do you like the best? And then you choose one. Okay, real people choose. Every time they choose, they have to answer with real responses as well, just like this. I like option B the best because I like the beard and the mustache as well as the clothing. clothing. A has a giant club, which I think is really cool and badass. So these are all different responses. You get to see in a graphed out way, what is my customer, how do they think? How are they segmented? Why do they like certain things? And most of the time, maybe even every time, I've been wrong. So I've been like, oh, surely this is going to win. It usually doesn't win. So once you run through product research, understanding your customer, looking at customer reviews, thinking about off Amazon resources, YouTube, Instagram, um, forums, blog posts, etc., then you get this really good idea of who it is that I'm building for. Once you know who you're building for, you can think of, is it worth building for them and do they need a better option? If consensus says yes, they need a better option, you move forward. If the consensus says no, they don't need a better option, they're okay, you move back and you move back into product research to find a market where they need a better option. Better option doesn't have to mean the product that currently available sucks. It can mean it's okay, and you're, but it's presented in a really horrible way. You're gonna win with presentation and aesthetics in your brand. It doesn't have to mean that you re-engineer every product that you ever sell. Okay, so there's a few different nuances there um, to how you're going to perform with this brand going forward. But I think we're going to wrap it up there. I think that's a good jumping point for people to get started. If you want to follow along, go do this process, get as far as you can, then come back to my next video that will probably be out by the time you do that and leave a comment of anything that you have trouble with whatsoever. Um, I'm always happy to help. Truly leave comments. I will respond if you have any questions. Um, and be sure to subscribe down below so you don't miss more free course level content here on YouTube. See you in the next one. Thanks so much. Later.